Are you recording this? So these two right here. Yeah, those are puts. On the top, that, those are puts, okay? They're short, those. And then uh, this one is a treasury bill. And this one is treasury. No count, count, count. And first, uh, this is this is their money market, and then Tesla. The this is their weekly trade right here. They only have one weekly trade. Uh, the four twenty four one sixty two point five. It expires four twenty six next Friday. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, four twenty six, not four twenty four. Uh, four twenty six, and then, uh, and then you have another one, uh, four twenty six. Uh, that's expired 175. So you got a 162 and 175. They got two of them, and then you got the synthetic cover call on the bottom. Right. All right. So these this is a synthetic cover call. All right. So it's really these two. Okay. So it's 162, 175. So the current price right now for Tesla is what? What's current price? Was it 146? I, I, 147. Oh, 147. Uh, oh, 146 well, on the hour. Yeah. All, right. All right, so 147 closing price. So they're, they're way out there. $20, yeah. I mean, we're talking about almost more than 10% because 10% yeah, of 147 is $14, $14 plus 147. Yeah, they're short those calls. They'll make money on those. Next month, yeah. next week, next Friday, if they stay below 162 and 175. Yeah, they're way out of the money, so they make uh, money on those short calls. Which short call? Which number? Those, well, those 162.50 and 175, they'll, they'll make money yeah. on those as long as Tesla stays below 162 by next Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. The point. That's the point. They're going to make money because they're going right. to stay under. But the thing is, the thing is, they they also, I mean, the 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 premium is higher now. So because the premium is higher, they right. they can they can go out further out of the money. So why are they playing so further out now? Uh, yeah, one. Well, is the, well, I think the, the the premiums pumped up because of the earnings well, are coming out Tuesday. Yeah, and that's, yeah. Uh, IV is sixty one. Yeah. IV sixty one percent now. Yeah, the IV, IV. is high. Oh, hey, look! Look at the price. Holy cow! Twenty six six days. I mean, the six dollar. Yeah. They, play, they they used to play. Remember for 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 months, uh, the price is one forty seven. Guess what they guess what they play for next week? One forty eight. I mean, literally, that's how they play it. <laughs> it's crazy. And we're like, why they play one forty eight? This is so close. Um, but, and that's what frustrates retiring dividends. But now, I mean, they went out. They went out. How many stack out there? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They went eight position out to get to a dollar eighty-three <laughs> for one sixty-two. Is it one sixty-two? Is that correct? I forgot what it was. Yeah, one sixty-two. Yeah, one sixty-two and a half. And yeah. yeah, so they went out to get a dollar eighty-three. Uh, right. Uh, way out there, eight pole position out. Okay, uh, and. You know what? That's that's good, and 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 and, and because why? There's a couple of things. One, I like this because they still make a dollar eighty three cents of of the trade, which is which is still pretty good. But however, now if Tesla go up between now and Friday, if Tesla bounce back up, guess what? They they can ride the ship with it. You know what I mean? When they that's play right. when they play at one forty eight, this is the problem. This is why Tesla would just keep coming down. When they play at 148, what do you think? What do you think have to happen to the NAV? Anytime Tesla go up, uh, Tesla cap out. It cap out right away. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So they basically be able to capture more of the upside if yeah. it's going back up. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. That's the key part of of how Tesla TSLP do it. Well, the thing is, they're, everybody's so bearish on Tesla. They're, they're thinking the earnings are going to be crappy. So everybody thinks it's going to keep going down. Tuesday well, the, question, the question, if it's already priced in, in the price. I mean, it's been going down, down, down for a long time. So now the question is, already the price of Tesla priced in, all the negativity in the market. 
That's the big question. I don't have an answer to that. That's right. We don't. Nobody does. So all you got to do is really uh, hang in there or buy more if you believe in Tesla for a long, uh, you know, for the future future prospect of the company. That's what I did. I bought more than 250 shares yesterday. Tesla. I bought Tesla, basically. So, yeah, I, I still believe in Tesla. I don't know. I, oh, I do, I, too. I, I think it's a great, you know, it's a, you know, it's a technological company. So, yeah. Especially yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about the robotics, the FSD, yeah. the, the energy pack uh, and technology, everything they have in mind that, you know, the, the solar panels. Uh, there are so many things that I don't think that uh, analysts priced in. And they're looking at it like uh, just the other company and the EV that is slowing down due to many reasons in the economy right now. Uh, and the interest rate, which also uh, killing some of those auto loans, people kind of have difficulties take uh, loans to buy cars when the interest rate is about eight to nine percent. About that, so yeah, uh, currently it's an environment, it's the market condition that hit that uh, company. But uh, overall, there are other revenue streams. It's a profitable company. People forget about that. This is a growth type of company. And they're making money. They're not losing money. They're making money just less than before. I mean, the growth rate is slowing down. So what? It's still profitable. It's doing great. That's my opinion, of course. Yeah, I agree with you. Short term, I think, you know, there's a lot of bears on tes Tesla. But long term, like I said, it's the company's, I can see it going I don't know if I can believe with Kat. What's her name? Kat, is it Kathy Woods or whatever? She says it's going to 2000. So yeah. I, I don't know about that. but yeah. And she bought last time that I saw, she bought $14 million shares of Tesla for the multiple funds. ARKK, ARK, yeah. New. yeah, those two, the main two flagships that they have. Um, yeah, she continued buying it like crazy. That's I'm getting a daily email from... Uh, from them that what the, the trades are. So I'm kind of interested to see what they're doing behind the scene. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, she bought $14 million. She continue co accumulating Tesla again, like in the past. So sometimes she trade them, sometimes she sell in order to buy other, uh, other holdings. But for Tesla, I mean, this is gonna be back to be her core. You know, it has always been the core, but it's growing in, uh, in, in their funds. That's what I've seen for the past week. Yeah, you just think, yeah, you just think with, with Tesla so be, being so oversold, and I think with this earnings report coming out on the 23rd, which is going to be, I think it's going to be a bad report, and hopefully that'll be the last, maybe it'll just wash out and then bounce, then start going back up. Very likely, look, uh, we don't yeah. know the future. We don't have crystal ball. It may go down uh, furthermore uh, because maybe there's still so much uh, short position that institution taking on the company and there's so much. And there was a downgrade. I was looking to see what went down. There was one institution, a financial institution downgraded. I don't remember the name. I can search it. But they, they moved from uh, uh, buy to hold uh, rating on, on the company. And uh, and they all that are followed, and so when they're coming up with like uh, those, you know, rating negativity against the company, that also has an impact for the overall investment community, you know, Wall Street. So I, I think this is a temporary stop. We again, my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I. I still believe in the company. I still believe in the growth, and uh, overall, I I see a future for this. Uh, oh, I, you know. I agree with you 100. percent It's just yeah. there's just so much negativity now. Like you know, they they recalled the cyber truck because the accelerator got stuck or something. They had, they had but you know, they only had four. They've only delivered four thousand trucks. So, well, they they will fix it. I mean, they will. Oh, no, I know they will. Yeah, they, they, they do all the best to get the better, better product. Yeah. And, uh, and safer and they, they, that, that's the whole idea of coming up with a product that is so innovative 
and uh, they they are the first one to come up with something like that. So they they will learn and they will uh, improve, and they also. And I mentioned that also one of the posts I put there that uh, in the this code about the ten percent reduction of uh, job cut. You know, I think this is a good news. I, I see this as something that they're going to be very nimble, the cost efficient. The only there was duplication of roles according to the email that Elon sent to the employees, explaining the reason of these job cuts. That's a very uh, common practice across many corporate America. You know, when they have to cut jobs because of redundancy of duplication of effort or roles, and they try to be more efficient and uh, and just in, uh, reduce the labor cost. And the labor cost comes with reduction of the cost for benefits they're getting for matching, for uh, insurance, health care, vision, dental, and all the things they have to pay for their employees. All these costs are going to go away once they cut 10 percent and uh, so so this is like something that you reorganize the company make them better use a ai ml machine learning a, a practice in the assembly line so that way they can get more efficient more productive and they can sell more cars and mm -hmm. the profit margin will grow as a result currently the profit profit margin is narrowed and that's what they're looking they're just looking on one lens but they're not looking what they do to expand that uh, lens. I mean, uh, to, to the profit margin I'm talking about. That's that's when I was looking at the numbers. I said, what the heck? I mean, the company isn't good. It's still making good money. Uh, they just get, get punished because they're not growing as high as before. So what? So they're, they're still growing very well. At least the numbers showing that. I don't know. Yeah, let, let me ask this uh, just the numbers wise uh, because they 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 play so far out uh, you know normally they've been playing right on the money but now they're playing way out there um, if, if I, more than 10 percent I mean they're essentially playing almost 12 percent out of the money uh, the question is uh, are, are they, is yield max seeing that Tesla after the earning, because it's the earning week, so they're seeing that the potential after the earning, this thing going to skyrocket. <laughs> they, in other words, they're seeing that they 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 they're looking at the earning as not a negative, as a as a potentially positive. <laughs> because if they think it's a negative, they're going to put one forty eight as a strike price. That's, that's right. I think you used the key word there, and that's potential. You know, they see a potential. So they're not quite sure. And then, you know, maybe they looked at multiple different areas where they could still make good premium. Well, I don't know what retired dividends opinions on this is, but I, I'll tell you, I love this play. I love the strike price. I, I I love this play. Kobe, do you love this play? Because here's why. 162, and then they have another backup, they have a backup stop at 175. So if if the earning if the earning report and the thing is explode and it go up, uh yeah, guess what? They're gonna ride, they're gonna go up with it. They're gonna ride up with it to 162, uh, all the way to 175. But if the earning go the opposite direction, Hey, you know what? At least we made a dollar eighty-three premium. I, I just got back. What What was the question? Okay, so the question is, um, you know, so uh, I don't know if you see my screen. Uh, so Tesla for next week, uh -huh. uh, their cover call, their weekly cover call, uh, they put a strike price of one sixty-two. Essentially, uh, they're playing more than ten percent out of the money, almost about twelve percent out of the money, right? And and so. They do. I, I love the strike price because if 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 the earning report is good, they gonna the 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 Tesla price will rise with it. The NAV will rise with Tesla as it go up. You know, before in the past they used to play. They used to play the strike. Uh, the you know the the stock price is one forty seven. They would play one forty eight. It's crazy how close they play it. They play right on the money sometime, and and so a lot of a lot of us are frustrated. You know, for that reason, they're like, why do you play so close? 
Now they do that because they can get more premium. Uh, but now, since our volatility up, they they they're essentially playing at 162. All right, so I, I'm just prepping you the the question I'm about to ask. The question is this: Do you? I sense that yield max must have know some, or they must have feel that the earning report potentially going up, not going down. Is that is that how you see it too potentially? Well, I'm looking at their trades now, yeah, and. It it's a little weird to me because the 162 says it's an it has an expiration of 424. That's no, it's when, 426. That's, 426. 426. Well, it's listed. I mean, they have the 175 at 426, but the 162.50 says it expires 424, no, which is uh, a Wednesday. The, no, it's, it's 426. The read the QCIP, not. Yeah. Oh, the QCIP. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's just an. Uh, I'm assuming it's, just, it's a it's, typo. It's, it's a typo it, error on no, their part. No, that, uh, that that 424 is just the month. That's the showing month. it's the April 24, April uh, 2024. But the actual strike is a uh, date is April 26th. Okay, so they just don't put in the date for that one, but the 175 yeah, yeah, yeah. they that's put just, the date. That's in. just uh, yeah, where they error. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, I mean, it could be taken as one of two way. It's just it, it could be played further out of the money. Uh, one because volatility is up, and you're still getting a decent premium at that price. Yep. Um, That's what I. Think. It, it, it could just it could just be a hedge of you know because is Tesla going to blow out earnings? No. Uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and just say, no, they're either going to miss or they're going to meet expectations. Well, so if, if, if the, they're going to the, miss, the, if they're going to miss their expectation, let's say, because it's one of one, one way or the other. All right. So, uh, yield max, if they miss, then they would play it the way they've been playing all this whole time. This, this yeah, whole time. but you, you can't, you can't do that because right. like, on on the on the rare chance that they do meet expectations but have a good earnings call, good forecast, because there's two parts to an earnings. It's the numbers with like the EPS, the revenue, and all that, and the financial part. And then the other part is the earnings call that you know usually explains everything and then gives like a forecast and guidance and everything. So they could blow out earnings, and you know then you have the stock that could could run like ten twenty dollars. For an hour, and then at 5:30, when they have their earnings call, they could say, "Yeah, well, things are looking bad. Interest rates are up. You know, we're shutting this plant down. We're shutting this plant down, and you know, we're upgrading this. So this is going to get shut down. And then you go from up twenty dollars to down twenty dollars. So you you can't play it too close because you know they still have to provide an income. So it, it's a it's a solid hedge." But you don't want to say like, oh, well, we're 90% sure that Tesla is going to go down after earnings. So we're going to, you know, it's 145. We're going to play it at 148. But, you know, they can't do that because if if something happens, hell, even if it goes up $5 or more, you know, they're going to incur a massive loss. So then it's more of the nav getting destroyed. You know what I mean? So you have to play while volatility's up. You have to play some sort of hedge. You can play it a little bit closer than you normally do, but one sixty two fifty gives you enough of an upside on an options play where you're still getting a fairly decent amount of premium, but it's not so close to where if something crazy happens and you know they give good guidance, good forecast in the earnings call and it goes up that you're not going to get blown out on that strike price. If that kind of answers it. No, it, it's, it's, it's a good, yeah. it's a good price as a good yeah. hedge. You're, you're not too far out of the money expecting a run up, but you're no, not. They're getting a dollar 83 for that 162. <laughs> and, um, and no, I, I like it. I like the strike price. I love the strike price. Um, I, I love it. Um, the reason why I love it because if Tesla if Tesla go up ten points, guess what? We'll be fine. It go up to one fifty, it go on one sixty, and guess what happened to Tesla price? It's gonna go up with it, and uh, it's gonna go it's gonna ride with it until it hit one seventy five, and then it stop riding. 
And um, so I'm, I really enjoyed this price in terms of NAV protection for those out there who are concerned about it. Uh, well, what you should really be concerned about is what happens starting Wednesday and Friday. Because once earnings happens, then your IV crush comes into play. So your volatility is going to go from like 60 down to 40. So then they're going to like that that Friday when they, you know, when they close out of this 162.50 and the 175 call. Yeah. You're probably looking at them playing, you know, four or five dollars out of the money again, just because volatility is non-existent because earnings is over. Yeah, check. But but the thing is. Um See the the pro the one thing, the thing that like you 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 would sell out of you would close out your position after earning. But I would close if it was me personally. I would close it before earnings. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I hate playing earnings. Yeah. when it comes but, to options. But yield max for whatever reason, so far the three earnings that or three four earnings that I've seen, they would just ride this thing. I was like, what the frick? They would just ride yeah. Because if it's if they do if earnings is. Tuesday after hours, yeah. I would be closing my options play Tuesday at 3.30 or yeah. 3.45. That's what I do every time. Yeah. So like right now, I have call, I have sold calls against Google and Amazon because we're in a downtrend right now. Yeah. But I have them set to expire on the 26th. I sold them Wednesday, Thursday, some, yeah. somewhere around there. Um, but Amazon and Google both do their earnings on the 25th after hours which is thursday so i will even though they expire on the 26th and i'll probably be mostly profitable with this downturn i'll still close them 330 345 on thursday because i'm not going to run a risk of having them blow out earnings and i go from an you know 60 70 80 90 percent gain on my calls to well now i'm losing because you know they ran way up does that make sense yeah now what happened what happened if uh, if earning on Wednesday okay so the stock price let's say let's say earning horrible price is coming back down it's 147 uh, right now closing uh, so I don't know what the price is I don't know what that is 147 and so if it uh, if it's if it's closing price, is this after market price one forty seven or one uh, or closing price? No, that was the day close. Okay, day that close. was Friday That's close. That's okay, so if it uh, on Wednesday, let's say it dropped to one forty two, and then go down lower to one thirty. Let's say it hit one thirty. You know, because earning report just horrible, horrible. It's one thirty. Um, they the problem is they don't close it. They they would they, they should just close it and re open a new position. And put it at one, you know, at one forty or whatever. But I, I don't see Yield Max doing that. They're gonna ride the one sixty all the way until Friday, and then they're gonna reopen it again. You know, they don't buy and close, close the position that well. The other, the other funds do, like um, on retire on dividends video. He, Cody does I, that. I think, yeah, I think it was either Coney or Invidi. One of them did it. They paid like a penny to close yeah. it and that was like early Friday or whatever. Yeah. So they don't totally hold stuff till closing, but yeah, I mean I forget who I was talking to the other day, but I looked at an option, I think it was for Tesla, and they it was like Wednesday or Thursday and the option the sold contract that they had was already down to a penny. So it's mm -hmm. like you're you're gaining no value between closing it and reopening it on Wednesday versus holding it till Friday. There there's no value to be gained. It's mm -hmm. not like it was ten cents or whatever and you're trying to harvest that that yeah. you know, that nine cents going from ten cents to one cent. There's there's it, it was literally on Wednesday at a penny so it's like there's there's no point in holding it for an extra three days past that point so if you don't want to reopen yeah. one until friday that you have that option but it's better to close it at that point just because yeah i, I totally agree the, but the, I, the only I the, the only risk it. you have yeah. yeah the only risk you have is it's it's a you're you're 99.9 percent .9 profitable essentially yeah. so the only thing you're not getting any more money and the only thing you have is more risk that if something crazy happens between now and friday or then and friday at that time 
something crazy could happen and it goes up and then all of a sudden you lose your value. So mm -hmm. it's better to close it and take your near 100% profit and either reopen another one or hold off until Thursday, Friday, yeah. whatever you want to do. <clears throat> but they they have their own ways to do things, I guess. Yeah, so I'm uh well based on based on this based on you know uh, what Lion said earlier um you know the the Tesla's not looking good. So far every earning is just drop. Every earning. So I haven't I, now I haven't experienced earning prior to 2023 because I'm new to the investment. So I don't know what 2022 earning was like. I don't know what 2021 earning is like. But every earning from that I've seen so far, uh, it's it, every time there's an earning is drop. I just like it's crazy. It's just like um, so. Who knows? Because uh, does you know laying off a lot of people does that save the company a lot of money? Now you got free cash flow coming up. Um, well, they already have a lot of free cash flow, yeah. so D it's does, just more free cash flow. Yeah, does they have, um, does what you call, um, you know, during the winter month, because essentially this is the, the winter month. So all the northern states, m like my dad's a roofer. He, he, you know, he fix and repair roofs and stuff like that. He, he's a general contractor. He, you know, he do home repairs and all that stuff. There's not a lot of home repair in the Northeast during the winter time. They just, there's just not a lot. There's not a lot of business. So a lot of them, what they do is they go into snow shoveling, uh, snow plowing, and that's where they make their money. And so they're not, they're not doing any roofing stuff, you know. So where, where I see is that not this earning report, but the next earning report in what is that? That's in July, June or July. I think that's uh, you. I, I think there's going to be growth in there. Uh, the springtime is where a lot of people come in and do home improvements, uh, lawns care, and all that. Stuff, you know, whatever it is that they need to do, and you know. So now you get potential. The reason I mentioned roof and stuff like that is because of the solar roof, uh, uh, solar panels, batteries, all those things that people want to invest into it. I think I think there's potential. This is just my theory, my concept. I, I who who knows what what I know about these things. But well, like like I said, that one of the saving graces for this potential earnings was yeah. when they missed deliveries bad. Like I said, they their expected earnings per share at that current time yeah. was like point seven two point seven three yeah. uh, per share. So when they missed deliveries as bad as they did wall street revised their expected earnings per share down to like 51 or 52 i don't i don't know what it is yeah. um but it, last time i saw it was in it was in the 50 cent range so you know it could be like at, at a point where they did with coinbase mm -hmm. coinbase had um Coinbase, what their expected earnings per share was near zero, and they kept doing it even though Bitcoin was going up and you know everything like that. So when Coinbase did their earnings and it was like a dollar oh four, it caused a massive run up because it's like oh they they blew out earnings, you know what I mean? Oh, you think you think just just because of the they adjust the estimate. You think that this earning report may potentially go up? Yeah. So if if earning if expected earnings per share from Wall Street was 0.73, but Tesla is like let's say hypothetically Tesla they were expected. going to report a 0.66 earnings per share, right? So obviously, if they're expected 0.72 and they release a 0.66, obviously it's a miss. They're going to go down. So right. they're looking at, according to Google or Microsoft <laughs> Bing, 0.464. Okay, so Tesla is set to announce first quarter result after the market closed on Tuesday, April 23rd. As investor, here's what you need to know. Adjusted earning per second. Analysts expected an earning per share of 0.464, which reflect an estimate for the first quarter. And you say that number is adjusted from a pre on, on, on a different number? Yeah, so it was before they did their announced their deliveries. It was like point seven, um, or or something around there. Um, like point seven, point seven one, point 
Yeah, because they did it based on what was last last release on January 2024. Yeah. Uh, which was 0.71. So their initial expected earnings per share was around 0.71. Now this was like a month or so ago. Yeah. And then they released their delivery numbers. It was either for the month or for the quarter, and they missed really bad, and Tesla plummeted. So then what Wall Street does is they go, obviously, with a miss, they're not going to report 0.71 earnings per share. That's obvious. That's basic math. Um, so what they did was, you know, because Wall Street, when they – set up to do their their uh, their earnings forecast, they're always putting out in numbers and then they're revising them all the time. So then when Tesla missed their deliveries, they revised down to, I thought it was 0.53, but now it looks like they revised it down even further because according to investing.com, their forecast for earnings per share is 0.49 and then your your being is like 0.46 so you're within that 0.4 something range but like i said let's say hypothetically they met expectations on on deliveries right mm -hmm. let's say they kept the expected earnings per share to be 0.72 let's say tesla for sure 100 percent knew they were going to release a 0.66 which would equate out to a miss, so then the, it would drop, right? Yeah. So let's say hypothetically Tesla's already locked in to uh, release a 0.66 earnings. Well, they missed deliveries, and you know all this was factored in, and then they revised their EPS expectations lower to 0.5, let's say, and then they come out and say, well, here's a 0.66 that you know. This is our earnings per share. Well, now it's considered a beat, so the stock price could shoot up. So if they lower, if they drop their EPS low enough, it's not going to be 0.66. I'm just using it as a number, but well, this um, might be a it, spot. It could, this, it, <laughs> it could be, it could be like it yeah. could be a shoot up for the yeah. stock because Wall Street lowered the expected EPS lower than what they're pretty much expected like if they're expected to do a 0.55 mm -hmm. and they release a 0.55 well because wall street you know revised their expected eps down lower now it went from a bad miss to a beat this so might it could be, well, it could it could, put, it could potentially yeah. now i'm not going to say it's going to happen this is just one of the ways that i look at it and when they constantly mm -hmm. revise their numbers so do I think they could be around a 50? Absolutely. Because right. 50 is pretty low. And if you look at it, yeah. like the even the last four earnings, it was point, 0 0.85, 0 0.91, 0 0.66, 0 0.71. So even if they do a 0.5, let's say, you know, that's still technically considered a beat. And if it's 0.46, like the Bing is showing on your screen, mm -hmm. That's a that's a, a bigger beat than what a 0.49 versus a 0 0.50 beat is. You know that's technically meeting expectations, but a 0 0.50 versus a 0.46 expected is is considered a bigger beat. So it could be the potential saving grace that stops them from having a massive drawdown uh, after earnings. Now, like I said, that's just the first part of earnings because now you still have the earnings call that follows. And then it's like they could beat it by dropping a 0.71. And if they have a, a terrible earnings call, then, you know, you just throw all that out the window. So they have to uh, they have to really step their game up on the earnings call. And yeah. lately since... Uh, I think it was Andre or something, whoever left that was that was running like the earnings call, like keeping yeah, everything C, organized CFIO, online. C, CFO. When whenever he left, the yeah. earnings call went to complete yeah. shit and it was a, a total disaster. So yeah. um, I'm hoping that they get better, they get more structured because you know, when you're acting like you're having a college frat party on the earnings call, it's like that's not what investors want to see. 
So they were up five bucks because they met expectations. But then, you know, it's like they're having a college frat party on the earnings call, totally unorganized and chaotic. And that's why it dropped twenty dollars a share after after the earnings call was over because it was chaos. So, well, well let's recap you know. here real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. So you got uh, Tesla announced first quarter result uh, Tuesday, April twenty third is the earning call. We don't know the time, but so far in the past, it's been in the afternoon. Uh, earning forecast expected point four six four. That's what you said before, uh, and uh, the last one was point seven something. That's right. And operating income expected to be two point two three billion, up from third quarter, but lower than fourth quarter. Uh, oh, that's twenty twenty two. So, uh, well, twenty twenty two is where they make their money. That's crazy. Uh, up from third quarter. So that's good because third quarter, I thought they were, I thought they were doing fine. Because third quarter in December, it, it rise. That was kind of weird month, December to January. Tesla went up pretty, pretty strong. Um, right, so, you know, of course, uh, you know, robot taxi, uh, low-cost vehicles on the plate here. <coughs> Here's my thing, man. This July is going to be the make and break for Tesla for me. I, I'm, I, I, I can see... Uh, first of all, overall in the long in the long spectrum of thing, I think Tesla is going to do fine. But in a very short time, I, I'm looking at July. Uh, Tesla stock is down 40% decline this this year. And Robotaxi, even after the announcement, Robotaxi they still dropped 12%. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, when you want to buy, there's a huge difference between uh, buying Tesla. Or buying an ETF, you know, like ORK, uh, no, ARK, ARKK, or, you know, SCHD and stuff that vices owning Tesla. When you're owning Tesla, you have to really analyze these kind of things um, more so, you know, because when you buy an ETF, it's kind of like a no-brainer, okay, because somebody else do the work. You're like, all right, is the ETF paying me dividends or not? Okay, good. And then uh, I'll shut up in color and I'll wait for the next payment, next month payment. But when you're trying to own the stocks, like you, you got to really look at analyze their their balance sheets, their dollar, their financial data. Um, you have to understand the sentiment of the and the analysts between the the you know the buyer and the analysts out there, because especially something big as Tesla, um, you know, it it it's it just crazy. This is it, it it I almost feel like back in August uh, when we were discussing. Bitcoin. Uh, there's the people out there like Bitcoin's gonna go up. Bitcoin will go up. and then there's ninety percent of the other people like I don't know. Bitcoin's probably much to do about nothing. It's cr- it's crazy how the conversation, and then those who bought Bitcoin obviously did, did really well. You went from twenty five thousand dollar Bitcoin to you know sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin in a matter of six months or so, and uh, and so you're gonna get super rich for those guys. But and, and same thing as what Tesla, you know, it, it's. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, do you believe in the company? Uh, Kathy would believe in the company. I don't know if they're going to go up 2,000 shares like she's, she predicted, but who knows? She's the expert. I'm not an expert. But um, I, can, I still can see this thing can be 2x, 3x, uh, you know, within, within, you know by, within the year or, or at least in the next two, three years. We're looking at still at the beginning. I mean, Tesla is still. I mean, when you look at in comparison to to other, you know, automotive, other technologies company, Apple, Google, uh, you know, Nvidia, a- AMD, Broadcom, a- a- every other technology company out there, and you comparison to like every automobile company out there, Tesla is still pretty young. It's a young company, and they're still trying to find their way. Um, and uh, this is very interesting. All right, so Kobe, uh, you get the last, uh, 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 since you close here, I'll give everybody a chance to talk. Uh, so Kobe, what do you think is, what do you think this earning report and uh, on Tuesday, um, what's your final thoughts on this? Well, like I said, it's, it's really tough to call, um, especially with, them missing deliveries like they did. I think they could report around a 4.49, uh, maybe a little higher, a little lower. I think they'll be pretty much right around expectations because, you know, there's a lot of like 
conflict going on that near, I think it was the Red Sea that caused like Berlin to shut down for a while. So um, it's really tough to call. Um, I don't think earnings per share will mean as much as what's going to happen on the earnings call. Uh, nor do I really care as much about the revenue and the earnings per share. I'm more looking forward to uh, the forecast and the guidance from the earnings call. So if that's good, it could be the saving grace uh, a lot for for Tesla. And, you know, if they give good updates with, you know, RoboTaxi and, you know, they get some clarification on the whole pedal issue with the Cybertruck and, you know, this, that, and the third. So... Uh, or, uh, the earnings call itself is is really going to set the tone because, like I said, if they meet expectations or miss on earnings per share and revenue, and they have a big drop, you know, earnings call can really bring that back. We've seen it with numerous other companies in the past, like Netflix, especially where they'll have like a twenty dollar drop, and then the earnings call is really really good, and then you know, by the end of the earnings call, they're in the green by ten twenty dollars so uh, a lot of it really comes down to the earnings call for me and seeing what they give in terms of like forecasting guidance for not only the next quarter but the next uh or i'm sorry for the rest of the year yeah uh all right awesome i appreciate kobe don h what do you what do you what's your opinions on this well i kind of agree what kobe said it's just it's it's all it all depends on the earnings call and what happens and you know, I, the way the stock has been behaving the last, you know, really since July, it's just been, it's been, you know, lower highs and lower lows. It's just in a downtrend. And hopefully this, this earnings report, you know, maybe it'll be a blowout, you know, I mean, not a blowout, but it'll be a, a sell off, a climactic sell off where it just drops and then people finally step in and start buying it. And then it'll finally start its way back up. But well, all the news is all the news is so negative about yeah. it. It's, everything is just you know deliveries. You know the yeah. 10, per, ten you know the ten percent cut in force, and everybody's all the Wall Street analysts are cutting. So, but I'm just holding on. Like I said, I'm just hoping that this thing you know turns around soon. Yeah. What? Uh, all right, that's awesome. Hog Farm, do you want to say something? House House Edge. Huff, do you want to you want to chime in on the earning call for for Tesla? This is just our opinion. Uh, for those who, for those who just came in, uh, so I'm just uh, I'm putting a video together just for the earning call here, and me and Mike, me and Don were talking about what's you know what what's gonna happen to our Tesla fund. But in order to invent to to figure out what's going on with Tesla, we have to figure out what's going on with Tesla. You know, so that's. And that's why the conversation take place here. Lions, do you you have any uh, you have anything you want to throw in? Well, I, I agree with uh, the comments made earlier. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen, and uh, I'm interested to see the forward guidance from the company. I mean, that's I believe is going to drive the sentiment towards Tesla. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they're gonna get uh, more confidence, and or not, uh, that's gonna be very interesting to see. Uh, hopefully, we get uh, some clarity around the robot taxi. He mentioned August eight as the launch date in his tweet back then. So I'm wondering if that's gonna still on track to get there. Uh, there are other uh, things related to the EV market, the trends. Well, how this is going, what they feel about it. Based on that, I think that's going to drive the investor sentiments and Wall Street. That's kind of my take on that. All right. Um, Rick, Mr. Sandman, SCSU, do you want to jump in? Yeah, there's, you know, there's a difference between sentiment and numbers and, you know, uh, line touched on this, but it's good to see that, um, you know, what's going to come out of this earnings call because that this is where we get to see the numbers side of it, you know, and then 
that creates the sentiment going forward. So it's it'll be good to actually get some numbers behind um, sure. what's going on, and you know we'll just have to go from there. Bill, do you you want to chime in on this? All right, Bill is probably driving trucks right now. He's probably doing something something uh, dangerous. All right, so here's my here's, this is just my prediction and my thought on this. I you know, who am I? You know, I'm, I'm just another YouTuber making videos. Uh, let me let me let me stop before I make my prediction. Let me ask some basic question. The last earning report did not include cyber trucks. This earning report will include cyber trucks. So uh, that's why I kind of Google a little bit. So if cyber truck average price is eighty one thousand dollar, I'm just gonna do the calculation here. Time, let's say four thousand, like uh, what Kobe said. Um, you know, we're looking at potentially, you know, almost you know three three hundred twenty four million dollar add on to Tesla operating income. Um, I mean, you know, gross income. You know, just just in the in from last quarter this quarter. You know, is that Kobe? Do you want to jump in? There? Uh, yeah, I wanted to clarify. There's there's one other thing that I'm looking forward uh, mainly to see is where where their their margins, like their gross margins, uh, are. Is it showing a bottom out because it's been dropping a lot over the last several quarters? Um, you know, at, at a high, you were almost at like thirty percent, and now you're down to like. 17 18 percent and it's not dropping as much but it'll be interesting to see if if it's found a bottom around 17 18 percent yeah um and if they're you know their adjustments that they're making is causing the margin to go up a little bit or is the margin going to continue to to drop as they you know cut prices and everything like that so um, oper operating margins, gross margins, all that is one of the other things I'm very interested to see. Yeah, I, I think that uh, even though a lot of positive signs, and they, of course they cop, they they stop, they they cut, you know, lay back, uh, lay off. So uh, that's another, you know, ten percent of their workforces, and that's operating expense that can be uh, that you know that's kind of reduced a little bit too. Uh, but either way, just you know, just Tesla earning reports. That's just what I've seen so far. Every earning reports, Tesla stock price went down uh, for whatever reason it is. I, 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 you know, so I haven't seen a positive earning report. So I, I don't expect this one to to be positive, even though even though all the numbers is positive. I mean, you think about it, they're making money. They are, they continue to building factories. They continue doing research and development. Their power plant is making money. Uh, their, their uh, I mean, their batteries making money. Their solar making money. Uh, their, their none. Uh, their software. What do you call their service? Tesla service. They're making money. They're making money across the board in all spectrum and all area of Tesla. You know, um, you know, uh, portfolio. But yet, you know, because the earning reports, you know, just because a bunch of frat boys talking about stuff. And therefore, it's gonna come down. It's gonna come down regardless. I, it's just, it's just the way I've seen it so far. So I don't, I don't expect this to be anything more than it's gonna come down. So the reality is, what, well, how much is gonna come down? And I've seen it come down pretty far too. So, so far the price is 147. There's potentially this thing may break 140. So we're looking at maybe potentially the high 130s. Uh, I don't know it's gonna go any lower than that though, because as you see after the earning report. It's kind of like once we wash our hands, we got it all dirty, we got it all smelly, and get it out of the hands. And now we can, now they can just focus, and then the the, the stock market, the price start coming back. And it all it's remind me so much in December. If you go look at Tesla, um, uh, back in December, that's not Tesla. That's e let me give me a second. I I don't like um, Tesla. Oh, that's why. You know, so Tesla in, you know, somewhere in the uh, in the summer, you see how this peak up right here. I mean, it was it went it went up. Um, in January, it no, that's June. I'm sorry, where's January? Right here, this this valley right here. I wish I I wish it's better. Anyway, uh, this is horrible. 
I, that's one thing I hate about these kind of chart reading. Oh, let me, let me, sorry, let me just do three year chart here. So this line here from January to December, it went up pretty high and it, it looked the same way, you know, like here, uh, here's in uh, at the end of the summer when it came down to like 110. I mean, essentially this thing was low and of course it bounced back up and then, and then in April it came down. But this is, this is, this one had nothing to do with Tesla. Uh, this, this one is had to do with the, the uh, bank crisis. And I, I, we went through that. And of course it came all the way up to very high in July. My, my suspect feeling that it may we may be looking at the same thing here somewhere around the, after this earning report after that for the next three months man from may june july it's gonna it's gonna come bounce bounce right back up that's just my guess uh just based just based on my experience of going going through it um but as you know who am i like i said it's just my opinion so if you want to take my opinion that's fine if you don't then Go watch somebody else, you know, other YouTube or do some other analysis. Uh, we, I look at Tesla and Tesla pretty much every day. I analyze every day. I talk to people just like this. I just ask questions. Um, and so, and then, yeah, I, I hope, I hope so. But either way, we, I have a feeling we're gonna win this trade no matter what because you put at 162 and this thing going down, you at least win that trade. Um, so we made that money and and we move on. But if it go back up, if it go up, you know, let's say the, let's say the earning report came out to be very good. I, uh, I guess Kobe is a little more positive than 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 me. So if earning the earning per share, his theory is correct, this thing shoot up. Guess what? One sixty two will be will be in a good position. So that means Tesla will go up with it. Tesla will be going up with it. And by the time you hit Friday, um, you know, we're talking about essentially Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So by the time in three days, I don't I don't know how much you recover in three days. So, yeah, I think 162 is still going to be safe. And if the price go up to 150, 157, 160 by Friday, we're, we're going to be safe. And plus they have a buffer at 175. So I think this is well played. I really like this play a lot. Uh, a lot. Uh, J Yield Max. I think to me they set this up to set up a condition for successful Tesla. In my opinion, they need to do this more often on Tesla. Uh, they just need to analyze it that way, and so this way, preserve the NAV a little bit. Uh, you know, so because you, you're you're risking essentially going below eight dollars and going below five dollars, then you have to do another reverse split. And I don't think I don't think the the consumer out there, the retail investor, has the stomach for another reverse split. Uh, I was just talking to Don earlier this morning, and um, you know what? I I'd be extremely shocked they, if they're going to go do another reverse split. If they do, yeah, I think that might be the end of Tesla. <laughs> You're going to start seeing a decline in in its uh, its retail investor. You know. All right, that's my take. Uh, hey, thank you so much, everyone, and thank hey, thank you guys for the uh, for the discussions and stuff like that. And uh, uh, and I'm gonna. Stop the recording here.